Next thing you'll want to do to operate the unit is turn the power on. We have the power button here, which we just turned on, and we have the air cooler power button. So you have two buttons to hit to turn the unit on. Once you turn the unit on, you can come over to the chamber <coughs> and look at the display panel. You can turn the display on here by holding that button. And once you get a reading of all the settings on the display, you want to ensure that you're within the operating range of the unit. So the most important thing is you want to verify that you're within the temper temperature range of using the unit. <coughs> we have a timer on the unit and the timer goes to 120 minutes. You can operate the unit if you're either in the on position or if you set the timer to a certain number of minutes. Once the timer is d done running, the power for the compressor will turn off. And once the compressor turns off, you'll want to depressurize the system over here by turning the pressure valve to open. <coughs> Although the the pressure would start leaking out of the system without opening the pressure valve it would leak at a very slow pace so you always want to open the pressure valve to depressurize the system after the time has run out you'll know that the time has run out because the compressor will shut off and the oxygen will shut off and you'll see that and also the display will go off if you're going to operate the unit again afterwards, you need to turn the unit either to the on position or reset the time to your desired time frame. If the unit isn't in the off position, the unit won't operate. So always turn it to the on position or set a time on the unit. <coughs> We're going to turn the display back on. Once the unit reaches about 52 kPa, which is shown here, and also on the pressure gauge, the release valves in the rear of the chamber will open and you'll hear that the release valves at the rear of the chamber will stay open and continue to let air out of the chamber as long as you're at 52 kPa. The unit will never go higher than 52 kPa. Before we start operation of the chamber we want to make sure that the, ch um, the chamber door is closed and your uh, client is inside the chamber. <coughs> when you close the chamber door you want to make sure nothing is blocking the full closure then of the chamber door. <coughs> then you want to make sure that your pressure gauge is in the closed position by turning this clockwise. If your pressure gauge is not turned all the way clockwise, then air will be leaking out of the system as the system starts, and the door will disengage and reopen uh, after about two minutes of operation. So if your door re or re disengages and opens after a minute or two of operation, then you want to double check your valve here and make sure you're, it's turned all the way clockwise. Your next step is to turn the oxygen on. 
The oxygen can turn, be turned on either from exterior or interior on the chamber. If you're turning the oxygen on exterior, you're going to hit this button here and the green light will go on. Your next step after that is to turn the compressor on. When you turn the compressor on, actually two things will happen. The, this button also controls the engagement or cl full closure of the door. So once we hit this button, the system will push the door up and the door will be sealed closed. The compressor starts and will start pumping pressure into the system. We'll notice that the KPAs here will start to go up after a few moments and we'll also see the same on the pressure gauge here. You want to monitor the progress of your client to make sure that their ears are letting pressure out. If for some reason the client is having an issue depressurizing their ears or if their ears are hurting, then you'll want to either open this pressure release valve to let some air out or stop the pressurization of the system from the compressor here or both. Stopping the pressurization will maintain the pressure where it is and the pressure may even start to drop slow, very slowly. You'll want to give the client time to um, for their ears to adjust. In some days clients ears may not adjust and, uh, and they may have to wait for another session. <clears throat> Typically, you'll want to uh, slow the pressurization down every 10 kPa. If you have a younger child in the system, to just slow the process down. When you're depressurizing the system, you'll always want to open the pressure release valve in addition to stopping the compressor from working. Currently we can see the compressor is off, so if we want to depressurize the system, all we do is we turn the pressure release valve counterclockwise and it lets the pressure out of the system. That concludes the training for the exterior operation of the hyperbaric car chamber.